All right, I suppose this is a good time to mention that uh, starting next week, each one of us is actually going to spin off in our own one-hour solo episode of the Triple Threat Podcast. It'll be like Monday Night Raw. It'll be three hours of us every single week. Guys, what do you think of that? I can't wait for my hour. See? I knew it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the... Last episode of the Triple Threat Podcast before we spin off into three individual hours next week. Uh, obviously, we're not doing that. I don't think anyone, <laughs> e- even less people who listen to this show now would listen to that. And I don't oh, yeah. think it's possible to be less than one person. So, uh, you know, but, but you know, there's the possibility in the future. I, I'm just noticing all these people uh, these days all have multiple podcasts. I think it's time maybe we do... Uh, triple all Threat pe- Podcast. All the people have multiple podcasts. And, 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 a, and, a, side, and a side cast. Uh, I know Ian Hanlon, in front of the side show, cast. he has a side cast. Uh, he's, you know, there's busy people out there. Uh, so I think... Shotgun uh, on Single Threat Podcast. That's going to be Well, yeah, there's, three, so, there's three of them. Single <laughs> They're all called the Single Threat Podcast with blank. So Single uh, Threat okay. Podcast with Alex, Single Threat Podcast with Matt, Single Threat No, I might be with, with Casey Kasem. Uh, he, he He did. <laughs> He, no, just the title. He's not actually going to be there because yeah, you're right. He did. I think his estate would um, would definitely uh, disagree with that. By the way, I should introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm, I'm William Vaughn, uh, one third of this Triple Thread podcast, and uh, the Casey Kasem wannabe is going to be uh, Alex. I Vaughn. don't want to be Casey Kasem. I just want my podcast to be named the Single Thread Podcast with Casey Kasem. Alex, are you sure? Because you sound pretty defensive. We said you want to be Casey Kasem, almost like you really want to be like be him. And that fella just talking uh, was uh, Matt Vaughn. So here, here we all are. This is the Triple Thread Podcast. Can you guys tell us now? Because I missed something on this. All three of us uh, talking about... Uh, whatever's going on a couple of weeks ago, basically. Uh, hey guys, how how you doing? How was the week? I was I, my week was amazing. That bad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yours is worth talking about. Yours is Yours worth is, talking. Mine's about. always worth talking about. Why don't you do something worth talking about for once? Yeah, Matt. Why don't you? Why don't you do something? What did you? Let's, I'm let's make this all about Matt. I'm what did kidding. Matt do? It's oh, he can't joke. talk about it. These are all. Give it to myself. What, what did you do, Matt, this week? Anything? Anything at all? What, What's the, what's the this week like? Uh, I'll tell you what, what I did from Thursday until Sunday this week. Okay. Uh, oh my god. Okay. Wait. What week? <laughs> All right. Did anything exactly. interesting happen Can't to you wait. in the last Can't seven wait. days? It's worth. No, not even worth mentioning. Just mention something that happened to you in the last it's seven literally days. Literally anything at all. Please. Uh. All right. You see, experience some uh, digestive uh, distress. I didn't think we were talking about our lives. That's right. That's that's the one unique thing we all bring to this show is us. See, anybody can us. bring you a movie review or a concert review, but we we bring you our unique personalities and ourselves. We bring you our, our hearts and our souls. Right, guys? That's how we do it here. The souls of our feet and the hearts of our artichokes. Nice. Nice, um, <laughs> pro- nice produce reference there. I don't know if I've ever had. Can you eat artichoke raw? Anyway, I'm getting off topic, Matt. What, what did you eat? I've never eaten all artichoke is in spinach dip, and it is delicious when covered in cheese and more cheese and yeah. eaten with a nacho dip. Yeah, or pita was, point. That's the only way. I point. think it's called spinach and artichoke dip. A and toasted those pita point. Two of them with a point peasant. Oh, park my place. God. <laughs> Really, Pete? Uh, no, the, the, I was crying at that. It's I was called. It was hilarious. It's called spinach. And that's why I was crying, dip, laughing. And there's about five percent of each, and most of it is just melted. What is it? Cheese and something? Garlic? I don't know. I don't know what's in there. I haven't made spinach and artichoke dick. Uh, dick? dick? <laughs> Whoops! <Whoop, whoops. laughs> uh, spinach and artichoke Richard <laughs> is the name of our our uh, produce manager here at uh, the IGA. Spinach and artichoke Rick. Spinach and artichoke Richard. <laughs> yeah, that's his name. Oh, and sometimes buddy. they call him spinach and artichoke chick. Uh, chick. <laughs> <laughs> the spinach and artich- artichoke chick is his wife. Uh, and uh, is he friends with Dwayne Dwayne the Dwayne Lock the Johnson? Drain the Lock Johnson. Yes, he is. Drain the Lock Johnson. <laughs> he's oh, he's nice close thing. personal yeah. friends with Drain the Lock Johnson. Uh, well, since Matt can't tell you anything, uh, he did. I uh, oh, I went to see uh, the he did the bo- <laughs> no he he live. Um, I went and saw nice. the uh, Blue Jays and Mariners last night. Oh, that was crazy uh, crazy one. Uh, nice. Yeah, was it? Yeah, went to what a game! Multiple, right? multiple innings there at Safeco Field in Seattle. What I noticed was that the pitchers threw 
a lot of pitches. Yeah, they, a lot of pitches. They did. Um, yeah, yeah. Between like the whole lot of them. And yeah. you know what? The, the, a lot of them are kind of wild. I would say that the pitches be crazy. Whoa, the pitches I be wouldn't, crazy. <laughs> I would. I wouldn't. I'd, I'd tell that one to spit an artist joke, Dick, <laughs> over at uh, IGA. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that was nuts. Oh, I also went to um, my friend's band, Cigarettes and Valentines. They're a Green Day cover band. I saw them at the Red Room in Vancouver. And uh, Red Room's a little spot. Um, it's nearer where we, and by we, I mean me and my friend who's in the leader of this band, near where we went to school at VFS. And it's kind of in a bad part of town-ish, bad part of town. Um, but the club is is really amazing. It's called an ultra bar, and I I still don't know what that means. Okay. I guess it just means it has lots of lights on the stage. It really was it, is. Was fan- it built out? Of, was it built out of a former ultra mar? Is that why they went for that? No, they don't have ultra mars out here. Um, oh. They only have. You're them, missing uh, out, uh, folks. Out east, yeah, you're missing out on um, gas same station. same price gas everybody has, I suppose. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it was at the Red Room, and uh, it was uh, my I can't remember if it was my second or third time seeing them. But uh, it's definitely been their best show so far. I was right up against the stage. I was all up in their grills. And uh, they had a very nice uh, nice set list. A lot of your old favorites and uh, a couple of new ones. Not too many new ones, though. They he, Apparently, he played one song from uh, Uno because they released uh, Uno, Dos, and Trace a couple years ago, which is like the plan we have for this podcast. We're going to do Uno, Dos, and Trace. Oh. Each one of us is going to do our own thing. Um, so yeah, it was Uno, Dos, and Trace, and like Billy was on the cover of Uno, and I think Mike was on the cover of Dos, and obviously Trey Cool is on the cover of Trace, right? Makes sense. And they made uh... another one called Quattro. So they released like, I think this is only a couple years ago, but they released four albums to unfortunately pretty low uh, fanfare. Um, Always a uh, bad choice. I, anytime they release a double album, it's like, no, take the worst songs out of both. There's a lot of fat to trim there, right? I, I, yeah, I, and it's just like it's so indulgent. Uh, I was looking for that word yesterday, self-indulgent. The same word I would use, or I guess two words compounded together. The same phrase I would use to describe when people have multiple co- podcasts. Self-indulgent. Yeah, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to indulge in ourselves and make three podcasts. You've said that on the show a bunch of times, Matt. It's a, it's a real sticking point for you. Yeah, I might be a little bit too self-indulgent. Oh, no, that's not it. Uh, so yeah, I, I checked them out and, uh, quite a show. So if cigarettes and Valentine's ever comes to your town, uh, they probably won't cause they're based here and they only do shows here once every, uh, so often, but hopefully if they, uh, do another show here, uh, people will, uh, check them out cause they're a good time. I wanted uh, to make a joke, but then you just kept talking. So I didn't... All right, keep going. Well, okay, what do you want? This is why I keep you talking. You said you were all up in their grill and I was going to say, try and get them to a hotel. To hotel yeah. yeah. Be a football coach, Crystal popping in the stretch navigator music, kind of thing as if the party was catered. Well, what's the song? Go. Uh, it's the um, isn't that the song that Dave Chappelle did that version of? How, how did <laughs> I this knew go? you were gonna do that. I knew you guys do that. The only way you know any song is, is, if the, is by parody. Made fun of it. Yeah, yeah. Do you know cheerleader now? Well, someone, um, someone very handsome. Cheerleader. Yeah, who the heck was that kid, by the way? Through the night. <laughs> no, no, don't. Oh, there should be less God. singing on this show. There Maybe you guys more singing. more singing, please. No, you guys sing on your own on your own shows. Sing on your own dime, Alex. Who would you pay a dime or more to watch sing? Oh God. Oh man, so many people. No, you didn't answer my question. I name know, even one. Oh, sorry. What I wanted to question? know who the kid was who sang that cheerleader song. What was that kid's name? Oh, oh, Omi. Okay. It wasn't the weekend, the weekend. No, it's not the weekend. The weekend's um, the weekend's is can't feel my face. Uh, I yes. Feel bad for him. Hey, there's somebody out there who can't feel his leg, Alex. Would you ever go see that guy in concert? Going to gym? gym? No. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> Alex, <laughs> your gym kind of stomping Tom Connor? No. Uh, Whoa. Alex, oh, went sorry, Matt. <laughs> to- well, he's Shut pretty up, dismissive man. of stomping Tom Connor. That's all. We he's remembered. Gonna, whoa. We remembered uh, from last episode. Uh, Alex was still recovering from the Foo Fighters show out in, Fighters. Uh, in Fenway Pack, in Boston, Boston, Massachusetts. And now Fenway is right. Is Fenway right in? It's right in Boston, right? It's not like um, Gillette being out in uh, Fox. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's it's right in Boston. No, 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 no. no. Through yes. the, you go from downtown through the back bay, and then you're there. You've been there uh, uh, numerous times, Alex. Have you been there more time? Wait, no, wait, twice, right? Three times? How many times? Three times. Three times. Three times. 
Three times. 2000 and 2013 and 2015. Only once for a baseball game, despite the fact that it's a baseball park. Baseball field. A park for Fenway Park. I guess you can call it a baseball park. Yeah, you can call it that. Who, what other concert, what park, other concert did you see there? Uh, Justin Timberlake and Jay Z. Oh, okay. Oh, the, uh, I don't remember that. Can you review that real quick? Tour? Uh yeah I can uh it was awesome real quick though Alex okay good yeah real we're, quick real right. quick there good you stuff. go thank you. you killed it that was like not even a tweet ten yeah. out of ten you did so you well don't remember we going to see them I do not okay. I don't think I lived in the city then we so can't keep know, track of all your shows so Alex way that you go to every you single show keep up with people I like shows some, I, like a, I like a good capade I like a good capade <laughs> wait a second <laughs> like an S like an ice. An oh, wait, ice, ice capade is, is a play on escapade. escapade? I never knew ice I actually capade. didn't get that either. Is that truly what it is? Or vice versa. Who's saying escapade? That was Janet Jackson, right? Come on, baby, let's get away. See, that's the kind of music I know, the, the modern stuff. <laughs> There's something really egregious that I missed that I... Oh, you know what it was? We were talking about Gordon Ramsay's restaurants in Vegas. Uh-huh. And I was like, he's got a steakhouse, and it's just called Steak. And he's got a burger place, but it's just called Burger, but there's no E in it. And then my lovely sister-in-law was like, yeah, there's no E in burger because GR is Gordon Ramsay. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> she, then, she then took out my – got my phone and then pulled up the logo from it, and the GR is highlighted. Oh, She's it is. Smart. Okay. Oh, I, I didn't know it's, that. It's okay. either highlighted or, like, capitalized or something. Yeah. That's clever. Well, boy, okay. did I feel not intelligent for not realizing that. Well, that's okay, Alex. You can make up for it when I you describe the show. I wish there was a podcast okay. you could listen to that would just tell you all the things you never caught on. It has to be very personal. That'll be – okay, just... so Matt, that'll be your hour. You just do that. That'll all those hour. things that Matt yeah. never caught on All to. the things you should have known but you don't know, and I'm pretty sure that I know that you don't know it. Star Wars is a take on the expression t- Star Tours, which, of course, was a popular Disney World attraction. <laughs> That's just Star oh, Wars. Like, is ba- nobody nobody knows that back? Star Wars was based, on the, uh, was based on the ride. It's like Pirates of the Caribbean. C- C-3PO was even in both. Yes, he was, yeah. Same actor played him both times. Uh, all right, Alex saw uh, Fuse of Fenway. I can only imagine that... Um, saw the Fuse of Fenway. It was... I can only imagine it was, it was it was quite remarkable. I saw them uh, years ago here in Vancouver in an arena, but this is at an outdoor stadium uh, in, yes. in Boston. I can only imagine that people there were um, quite intoxicated and uh, were enjoying themselves quite a bit. <laughs> Alex, uh, <laughs> Alex, <laughs> Alex <enough>. included. <laughs> no, no, I, no, was, no. I was dead sober. I was like, there's no way I'm being anything but present, and I don't want to have to get up to use the bathroom for any of this. So, um, so the, they drink water, though. So they play – what? Oh, I got, I got the set list right in front of me, by the way. You got the set list right in front of you. That's I got it in front of you, yeah. Um, so they open with but, um, uh, they open with three – Well, no, hold on. Okay. He's getting, the, he's getting right, Hey, you want to tell us a story? Hey, can I interrupt your story? It's <laughs> like, who, who are you, me? Are you me right now? Come on. Uh, yeah, um, I am. I'm going to do okay. your hour, your hour show. With Casey Kasem? Yes. Awesome. Now, but your name's Will, so it'd be Wacey Wasem. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be. <laughs> I regret saying that. No, where you pull that out of, but I don't want to look. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Wait, are we doing the story. blue episode or Yes, no? this is the blue all episode. episode. All, my, all my single podcasts will be very blue. Yeah, just, they'll be yeah, explicit at like the E tag. It'll, you'll be putting the E in burger. Putting the E in Burger. Uh, yeah, so uh, the whole – they played two back-to-back shows. No, they played two shows on uh, consecutive dates. So Oh, uh, so they did play Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. Sunday. I was wondering yeah, how you had that picture of uh, Julian Edelman there because I was like, oh, I think Alex is at the show tonight, but I thought it was on Sunday. There are two shows. There. Wow, they show up. Like I don't know what I do being in the same stage. building as like the Foo Fighters and Julian. So that's probably – that's probably. For I don't know what I do. Happen. You'd probably go, huh. This is pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> this is pretty cool. No, I probably... So, Alex, who was in front of you at this concert? You were talking this story earlier. Earlier? What was earlier? If it does, well, like, if it's not on this podcast, then... it doesn't exist. Okay, I'm no, going to no, tell no. this. I'm going to tell this. <laughs> we're going to try something different. I'm going to try something different and try and tell this chronologically, but we'll see how okay, this goes. Perfect. So you had a beautiful it. few days in Boston. Uh, met some nice folks from North Carolina. They're really great. They made a Arrested Development uh, reference, and I was like, okay, we're best friends now. All right, you're sold. Uh, so the day of the concert was Sunday, July 19th, and it was 31 and sunny the whole week. Like every time I look, 31 and sunny, 31 and sunny, 31 and sunny, 31 and sunny. Then I wake up on Sunday morning, and I look. I'm like, 31 and sunny. And then I click on the date, and then this big red bulletin comes up, and it's like special weather <laughs> advisory. Oh, I was like, no. Okay. Bad start. So, whole, oh, shoot. Sorry, I should have this ready. Um, I'll grab the picture really quick just so I can read this out. 
properly, but it was um, nagood for sure. So it says, <laughs> isolated, strong to severe thunderstorms are likely to develop <laughs> after 3 or 4 p.m. north of the Massachusetts Turnpike uh. initially. The main risk will be locally str- uh, strong to damaging wind gusts, but isolated reports of hail are also possible. And I went on to say that uh, they're not sure if it would spread into further storms, and thunder and lightning was very, very possible. It was as humid as a sauna in Boston the whole week we were there. So that city is dying, was dying for a thunderstorm. So I'm with my friends, Tom and Amy. I'm just like, all right, should I tell them? Should I tell them or not? Because I don't really know what north of the Massachusetts Turnpike is. I don't really know how uh, they expected to be kind of localized, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to worry them unless I had to worry them. That seems like a very localized storm. Yeah, like it's, it's between like north of the Massachusetts and 10th Turnpike. Street. Exactly. And I wasn't even 100% sure where it was. But uh, so I was just like, you know what? Okay, I'm not going to tell my friends. I'm just, if they see it, We'll discuss it, but they will freak out if I tell them, so I'm not going to tell them. So I'm just, like, sitting on that all day, and we go out, (laughs) and it's, like, sunny, but I'm like, oh, my God. It's so – like, everything just becomes, like, escalated. I'm just like, oh, but it's so muggy, though. And, like, two clouds show up in the sky, and I'm like, oh, boy. Here we go. (laughs) And so then it starts clouding over completely, and then I'm just like, oh, my God. It is so stiflingly hot. Like, we went down to the subway, and we're sitting in the subway, and it wasn't even hot enough that – as if you weren't moving, you'd still be sweating. So we we're all it's like just you're like wearing a blanket. Yeah, you can't get rid of. Yeah, and we get back yeah. to the hotel room at like three o'clock, and I check my phone, and I'm like, okay, the advisory's gone. So no, I'm definitely not going to say anything. But at least it looks like the advisory's, advisory's gone. So it ends up clearing up a bit, but it's still hotter, hot as a bugger out there. So we get to Fenway. Got off at the complete wrong stop. Had to walk like 25 minutes, just drenched in sweat. But we show up. Beautiful day, two opening bands, uh, the Dropkick Murphys and the uh, Royal Blood, who are really good, actually. I didn't know who they were. Um, so then the Foo Fighters get on the stage, and our seats weren't great. I mean, it was really hard to get tickets. I was initially trying to get tickets for the Saturday show, and uh, that didn't work. The, the, <laughs> when I tried to buy tickets, I had four browsers up on two different devices plus my phone and i still couldn't get any tickets for saturday so i switched to sunday and then we were high up it was like oh section 29 that's not too bad but it was section 29 in the grandstand Ooh. so it's like the uh, it's like if the upper bowl in the metro center or the upper bowl in the rogers uh, arena or anything like that was the same section yeah but so it was just like just once so it's like section 19 but your upper bowl you're just like oh okay so we're like the very top of the upper bowl uh, not the upper bowl, yeah, pretty much the upper bowl throughout. But uh, so the first couple songs, just like, all right, this is this is awesome. But I wish I was closer. And then you just kind of forget about it after a while. But the Foo Fighters for me are like, I remember being ten years old and seeing the video forever long and just being like, this is the best music video I've ever seen. And they then, released some really like, cool videos in the nineties. They really back, did back, back when the music day. videos were cool. Not Big as good B as Body even. Moving, but uh, not as good as Body Moving. That's true. Body Moving is is something special. Um, by the Beastie Boys, in case you didn't know that. Uh, but even Big Me is great. Like it's a take, it's a send up of like the old Mentos commercials from back oh, yeah. in the day. Everyone's popping Futos. Futos, yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that just for me, like, whoever your band, like, you two, or not you two, but, like, if you're a fan of you two or you're a fan of Pearl Jam, but, like, the Foo Fighters to me are, like, my, that's my rock band. Yeah, there's, there you guys. So, like, seeing them live was just, like, absolutely mind-blowing. I'm, I'm partially considering becoming a deadhead for the Foo Fighters and just following <laughs> them around everywhere they go. So, uh, Will, you saw them? When did you see them? Like, so I saw them in 2008. Uh, no, I saw them in 2008 when they were supporting oh, wow. uh, Echo, Silence, Patience, and Grace. And patience. Yeah. Uh, when they did, and that's where they opened with The Pretender. And uh, I just remember him being like, Times like these! And just like going into oh, that. God, he's, like, the he's, he's the best. He's the best. He's a remarkable screamer. And he, so I, I watched their documentary, uh, and I want to watch the rest of it, but only caught like. Uh, 25% of the way in and, and I watched it on, but he was um, talking about, uh, this is when they were recording um, Wasting Light at yep. his garage. Great uh, album. Great album. Yeah. Wasting Light was, was great. It's like all analog or is everything? Yeah. Analog? Yeah. They really okay. they recorded all analog in their garage. They didn't play too much Wasting Light on this, uh, on this tour that I could see. This was a lot of hits, um, but it's, he, it's because it's their 20th anniversary tour. They're 20? Holy yeah, cow. 90, 95 to 2015, so. I guess so, yeah, and he was, yeah, man, he's still, so he's, it's kind of like. <laughs> for a guy in a wheelchair, he's pretty spry. <laughs> or not <laughs> oh a wheelchair, but on, on a throne, but. 
Um, yeah, he was doing Wasting Light, and he was saying that uh, at, at some point the band just kind of was like, we got to fix our live show because our live show now is just kind of us going out and playing some songs. So they really made something of it, made something of their live show. So when yeah. I saw them, they were doing um, – so Echo, Signs, Patience, and Grace just came out, but also – uh, I think the year before was Skin and Bones, and the year before that was um, In Your Honor, that that double album that they did. Yeah. Which is a good yeah. example of a double album because one album is like 10 tracks of hard Rock. rockers and 10 yeah. uh, very nice acoustic, acoustic. tracks. Yeah. Uh, so they did um, they did the thing where they had the stage kind of at the top of the arena, if you, if you know what I mean by that. And then they had a big ramp. A big uh, ramp, and then in the middle they had kind of an acoustic section that they did with a bunch of strings players. So they had like a hard rocking part, and then a slower rocking part, and then they ended up with a big hard rocking part, uh, which was a lot of fun. So that's when I saw them, and uh, it looks like I mean they did Wembley a few years ago. Like their live their live shows have just gone um, gone through the roof. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they can do Fenway, like, back-to-back, and they're doing, like, kind of other concerts, but they did, like, City Field, back-to-back, like, they're they're legit. Yeah, they're just they're doing Rogers. Legit. And they have an here. amazing live so, a show. Yeah. Uh, Are you going to go? I, I wish I, I – I would like to. I think it either might be sold out. I kind of wish they could do BC Place here. I mean, One Direction just played that. T-Swift is playing that sometime soon. Um. Yeah, so they're, they're at least close place. to those two artists in terms of skill. I don't uh, – yeah, in terms of skill. Well, it's it's all about, you know, fan base. But I uh, would – would, would I don't know about a stadium show. I'd like to, to check out one. I don't think I've checked out one before. I've checked out a bunch of arena shows. Uh, but stadium shows, I, I don't know about being like at the very top of the bowl – I mean, whatever. It'd be fun. It'd be an experience. It depends on your location. Like, we have screens and stuff like that, and if the audio is good, it's good. The problem with us is we were at the grandstand, but there was the the pavilion boxes above us, and it kind of muffled the sound just a little bit. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, the good thing is you're kind of like, well, that was I was far away, and I still felt like very much a part of the show. And at the same time, I can't wait to see them again and be ten times closer and just lose my mind. Yeah, that's true. Well, uh, yeah, and they'll be around for a while yet, I hope. I mean, they, they're 20 years old. They are in their twilight years, but, I mean, Sonic Highways is also one of their best albums, I think. It's a nice uh, nice eight-track uh, on that album, so I, I like that Lights a lot. Wasting is pretty underrated, too, I find. I listened to the heck out of Wasting Light when that was out. It did the, the, the theme song from Thor on that one. It did, Walk. <laughs> yes, they did. Um, yeah, so I... I uh, uh, I'm, I'm envious, man. I mean, you got to, to check them out, and uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if fortunes uh, change, and I get to check them out highly, out here. I highly recommend if you have the means, everyone. If everyone out the means. there, they they are so choice. They're they're just <laughs> unbelievably good. Um, their uh, their t-shirt out here isn't that good, though. I saw the t-shirt for out here. It's just like well, the th- you know what's funny is I showed you that Matt t-shirt, which was like the baseball bats. And said Foo Fighters on the back said Boston 15. Couldn't find it anywhere. Yeah, they must have sold the heck out of those. It, I saw you were all decked out though, Alex, in your in your uh, Foo Fighters. Stuff. Yeah, well, I saw the I saw the hat, which is actually the exact same exact same hat as my Every Time I Die hat, except it has the double F on it. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, I have to. I have like, to. I'm literally wearing to. it right now, actually. <laughs> um, Good. And then for the T-shirt, I didn't know what to get. I don't like concert. I don't like tour T-shirts that much. But this one was just the X-ray of his broken leg, and it says Foo Fighters in the top corner. And then oh, that's 2015. awesome! <laughs> that's and it doesn't awesome. have anything on the back. I was just like, yeah, that one, that one, that yeah. one. Yeah, he's really leaning into that. I like that. Uh, he's leaning into that. They also have you seen the drawing of his schematics for the throne? Like when he was high on painkillers. I didn't see those. He was like, I was high on painkillers. I wasn't sure what to do, so he drew this like little thing, and then it ha- it's like his thing. It's like has things going across the top, and he wrote like lasers and ish coming out of the here, and speakers on the bottom, blah blah blah, and it's like just the schematics, and they made that into a T-shirt, and I was like, I gotta get that. I didn't. I don't know how many Foo Fighters you can get before – T-shirts you can get before it's considered gauche. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll at least come as close to the line as I can possibly get. Can I ask a really a really stupid question? Yeah. Please. Is the, uh, the throne is supposed to be like the, uh, the Iron Throne from Game of Thrones, right? I don't – it's – well, he did it and then someone else kind of designed it. So there are guitar necks coming out from like the side and not the top. Okay. So it's – I don't know if it's supposed to be like it, but it bears a striking, sti- <clears throat> it a, bears a striking resemblance. Okay, 
Um, so I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Like I only know all, all I know about Game of Thrones is just from hearing people talk about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, it's kind of uh, cultural osmosis. Anyway, <laughs> you're going to okay. see the Foo Fighters a hundred thousand more times. That's well, it's funny, yeah. And on the right down, funny, by the way, I just checked it out. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty <laughs> funny. So they have that in like in Boston was like on this like ugly olive green shirt, but they have it on the website in like a blue color with the white, the schematics and the white. So it's kind of like, yeah, I kind of want that. Yeah, so I just looked at. I want that. Uh, I'm looking at the set list right now, and um, it has you know the snippets that they play during the band intro, and then when it says Seven yeah. Nation Army, it says White Stripes cover, and then another parenthesis is with Dave Grohl's orthopedic surgeon. Dave Grohl's surgeon came yeah. out and sang Seven Nation Army. So yeah, when they're doing the band intros, they kind of everyone plays a riff, um, and then so when they show the bass player, he did, started doing the Seven Nation Army riff, and the whole crowd the got only all, cool riff on a bass got all Baltimore with it. As well, we'll call it. And they're just doing the, oh, 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 oh. And they do it a couple yeah, times. Buddy. And Dave tells us to shut up. And we're like, okay. And this dude starts coming out the curtain. And for like a split second, I thought it was Jack White. Um, but it wasn't. It was Dave's uh, surgeon. And he comes out and he's just like, yeah, I told him my doctor he could come out. If he knew any songs, he'd come out and sing whatever he wants. And he said he knew Seven Nation Army. And they sang, he sang the whole song. He was going insane the whole time. And the crowd was <laughs> super into it. It was bonkers. Super into it. Oh, it was amazing. It was so good. There's a, if you find it on YouTube, like I, I shared it on Facebook uh, probably nearly a week ago. But uh, – but, uh, yeah, it was from Nerdist, I think, and it has the whole YouTube video, the whole thing, but the crowd was, was really into it. And I had sent you guys a video of that as well, just the, the Kim singing the last chorus of verse and the crowd getting into it. Uh, it was hilarious. And then, randomly, the lead singer of Godsmack came out and sang School's Out by Alice Cooper. Oh, know. okay. <laughs> hey, He's from Boston. He's into I that, too, I guess. Actually, Godsmack's coming to Halifax in, in like, October. <laughs> yeah, I saw the Chronicle Herald tweeted that. I was like, okay, it's tweet worthy, I suppose. Sure. Sure, sure go for not? it. Why sure. not, eh? Sure, why not? Um, but the Dropkick Murphys open for them, who are who are a band from Boston. They have that one song. They have a bunch of songs. Actually, the crowd was super into them. But the one song they have is shipping up to Boston from the Departed soundtrack. And they were playing the song. My friend Tom was like, is this the song? I was like, no. He's like, how do you know? I was like, just when the song comes on, you will know what song it is. And he's like, okay. And like the very next song came on. I was like, yeah, okay. I got it. Like the crowd just exploded. This is the one. Yeah. The crowd was super into it, but also just the riff at the beginning. Like you just know. You just know that one. But I showed it Tom. <laughs> I was like, man, they should really open up with In Your Honor, like the song. And Tom's like, I don't know that song. And I was like, okay, Ooh. well, you should check it out. And it opens up with Dave. Like it's a very much like a concert. O- it's the opening song to the album In Your Honor. Well, all their all their album openers, I think, are tremendous concert openers. I really thought exactly. they'd open with something from nothing on this one, but they open up with an older one. With with Everlong, which yeah. was good. Like it was kind of funny because we had looked at the set list from so many shows, so we knew if the night before we played Big Me, he wasn't playing Big Me that night, which Tom really wanted, and Tom really wanted a Long Road to Ruin as well, which they also didn't play. Mm. Uh, and I wanted In Your Honor and Resolve, they didn't play either, or whatever. It's fine. Um, it didn't matter. They, every song was amazing. It didn't matter really. At the end of the day, we're just like went insane for the whole thing and taylor hawkins is so good yeah he's remarkable well it's like when you're around any like witty things to say about the concert it was just it was it was amazing it was was really probably the best concert i've seen before and i've seen you know not a lot of concerts but i've seen a few you've talked about you've been to a lot of shows well like not mccartney you saw yeah you saw paul you saw we we shared our first or at least my first arena concert which is motley Crue. the car uh, the yes uh, like yep. i want to say psycho circus tour but that's not it because that's a kiss thing i think it was a carnival of sins tour back in like 2003 or four a long time ago 2006 because yeah, 2005. 2005 must have been five yeah 2006. i want to say it's march 2nd 2006 um, because they had an after party at the Pacifico or the Palace. And I was there with you and Rob Forgeron, who both had the privilege of being older than 19. And my birthday is March 14th. So I was 12 days away from being able to go to that after party. And I could not go to it. Because we definitely would have gotten in and gotten in with the band. We well, I mean, you just would have paid like 50 bucks. But we were just, at the time, the concert just ends. like, what? There's an after party. Let's go. Yeah. Um, but we didn't do it. I don't know what the, I, a lot I, of the, I want to check one the, of those out one. I just want to check one of those out one time. 
I'm the sure it's not party? fun. Actually, there's uh, well, there's a screening for Edward coming up uh, at the end of August. I think I mentioned it before. I believe it's sold out. So if you don't have your tickets, tough look. Uh, but yeah, I, I uh, there's an after party after that. So I guess I'll be part of uh, part of an after party. I'll be like the main attraction, right? I'm not the main attraction at all, but I'll be part of it. That'll be fun. But I'd yeah. like to go to a band's after party and be like, hey, it was. You played. You played well. <laughs> like I don't know what you say to them. Hey man, you're good at music. You're That's good what at I was music. Say to Dig Rule. Yeah. You For me, I mean, there's certain well. people like that. You just sometimes you want to meet a celebrity, and I and I like never like. There's a couple I never ever ever want to meet. Um, Dave Grohl being one of them. Tom Brady being another one. Oh, okay, like they're, don't meet your uh, heroes, that kind of thing. No, don't, don't. I just it's not even like they'd be rude or anything. I wouldn't care, but I would just be like I just be I wouldn't be able to communicate with them. There would be, be no a, point. You'd be a puddle. All right. Okay, like, hey, you should meet this person. And be like, why? There's no point. I wonder who that yeah, would be. Definitely, for me. Uh, it's it, it's a community. I think maybe the only uh, person Adrian I would, Brody, I assume. Yeah, Adrian Brody. Uh, I think the only person I would be intimidated to meet would probably be because he intimidates lots of people. I'd probably be Vince McMahon. I'd be I'd be terrified by that. Giant Real seven year old man. No, that's the only person. I'm not talking about intimidation. I'm talking well. about like. You don't want them to be like, well, that guy's a loser. Because, uh, oh, yeah. you know, a lot you, you of like, a, famous people are kind of like, sure. are kind of like, when people meet them, they're like, hey, my friend says you're famous, but I don't know who you are. Like, that's that's who. So, like, Vince McMahon is being like, whatever. I wouldn't be like intimidated to meet him because I don't really care. But you have I'd, to, like, there's people you care about so much, they're just like, there's I wouldn't know what to say to them. I don't know who that would. I wonder who that would be for me. I can't think of like a celebrity. It might not be athlete. anybody. Yeah, it might, maybe it I might put not people be. on a pedestal way too much. But uh, okay. yeah, Jordan I mean, Spieth, maybe at the end of the day. Hey, man, he, he, I know he, you're he, a big golf fan. No, I, I I listen to PTI. I know who Rare Jordan is. I know he lost the. Uh, it, I almost called it the English Open, the British Open this past weekend. Right? Was that it? I mean, he didn't lose it. No, so he you didn't don't lo- really lose it so much as you don't win it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's like Jenga, right? Kind of, it's not like you lose, you just don't win. Yeah, I, li- I like Jenga because there's less likely that I would lose at it. Well, Jenga's a, a, it's a, it's a mean game because there's no winner. There's just one loser. So you can play with like 50 people and there's one person who knocks it over. And like, yeah, he's the loser and we all just didn't lose. And that's all the game is. And so I'll point and laugh at this guy for ruining our tower of rickety wood that we constructed. Anyway, uh, well, it sounds like you had a good time, Alex. Money well spent. How much Strictly the- for the means of having somebody knock it over. Was it, were they, uh, yeah, and you didn't spend too much on the tickets, right? 3000 bucks, something like that? The Foo Fighters, okay, so here, here's the thing. When I saw Justin Timberlake and Jay-Z, um, as much as it was for one ticket to them with taxes and fees, it was the same as three tickets to go see the Foo Fighters. Oh, wow. Wow. They're okay, not an yeah. expensive ticket. Uh, well, that's good, too. It's rock and roll. And, what, and when I say that, I mean, like, under 100 bucks. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I figured. Uh, you like get... I remember, like, Kid Rock was like, $12 to get in my show. And you're like, all right, well, not even. You can pay me $12, and I still won't go, but uh, thanks for the offer. Uh, you guys get your Pat tickets yet? Pat tickets, yeah. One, t- one ticket for no, one we're No, we're going to hold off on that. They're still, like, they're all, like, 350 American. The exchange rate is so terrible right now. It's, like, 30%. Yeah. So you, every, everything I bought in the states was like a third more than it than it actually was. And it was so recent that you go down to the states and it'd be like, "Is everything so cheap? Look, this it's it's less than it would cost in Canada, and my money's worth more. This is great." And now it's exactly worth more. I think par or as close to parity as you can get, really. Yes, yeah, but now it's um, yeah, it's good for my business. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, it's rough when you go down there for sure. You just uh, save I feel your like shekels. Like it's bad for like any hockey teams wanting to like any like Quebec or Markham wanting to get a new hockey team. I mean, the dollars yeah. just gonna screw well, them over. Too bad for Markham anyway. I just I learned that. that the um, the the guy in Vegas, I forget the guy's name, who wants to put the team there, but he wants to call the team the Black Knights. That's right. Yeah, I don't know about the the adge- I don't like. Well, there's the Wait, Blue Jackets, you- so there's the Black Knights. Well, know. the Blue Jackets has like a meaning. Yeah, it does. I guess Black just Knights the, are like, the oh, Knights. the Black Knight. Yeah, the Knights. That's what I'm thinking. I don't, I don't know if I want the adjective there. Because I guess the Black Knight is the guy from uh, Holy Grail. Oh, is that going to be their logo? Never mind. That would be awesome. If is that why he wants to name it? If, it, if it's really just the not. torso of <laughs> if it's just the torso of John Cleese on the ground. He's a real python head. Wait, that's legs. John Cleese? Uh, is the Black Knight? Yeah. Oh, weird. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh man, so many things are being revealed to me on this podcast. I hope it's as informative for you, the listeners. Yes, listeners, 
uh, if it's informative, say out loud wherever you are, yes, this is informative to me. We'll wait. Oh, good. Okay. okay. So you Thank think you so, so much for doing oh, that. That's very nice of you. And then, uh, yeah, so I heard that uh, Las Vegas put their bid in and, uh, and Quebec City put their bid in too. So whatever that means. I, I guess like yeah. kind of means like we were talking about this uh, a couple weeks ago, but it looks like that those two guys are going to get the teams next, which we kind of all yeah. figured would happen, right? We yeah. yeah. The whole Las Vegas thing, I don't know if that's going to work at all. We'll see. I think I think the appeal of being the first pro sports team there is kind of – what they are going for. I don't know. I don't know what they're going for, but they already have the deposits down, I think. So we'll see. I'm yeah. not paying for them. So, you know, they can do whatever they want. As far as I'm concerned, um, yeah. I won't be going down to Las Vegas anytime soon. Cause it's expensive. Uh, and our dollar's not at parity like it used to be. Remember that, guys? Just a couple of years ago. Yeah. I just think it's well. Crazy yeah, it was. That... I mean, like being the Fed went two years apart. Sorry to interrupt you, Matt. But one year was yeah. pretty much equal, and this year was pretty much definitely not that. <laughs> pretty much yeah. definitely not that. It's like McDonald's on the way down, and McDonald's on the way up on the dollar Ye- menu. That's yeah. true. Uh, hopefully, I'll eat somewhere cool in uh, Seattle. Yes, Matt. What were you gonna say? I was just going to say, I think it's crazy to have uh, that sort of thing in the desert. And uh, I saw a movie about crazy desert things called Mad Max Fury Road. It was good. Moving on. Oh, yeah. That's your one sentence. Okay. Complete thought. Yeah, that was Matt's uh, complete thought on Fury Road. You were excited, though. You, you texted it afterwards. I, I saw it by myself and, uh, because it was too late afterwards, and I wasn't going to put my wife through that. And uh, it was really great. It was very enjoyable. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, One question I have for you guys, though, when I watched it, I don't know if you guys experienced this too, but um, God, I think his name is uh, uh, Imperator Joe, like the big guy with the the, Morton Joe, the Bane mask on him. Um, He has that big speech at the beginning. Um, I couldn't really make out what he was saying. Can you guys make that out? I I don't think I had any problems with it. Okay, I I kind of. Um, it could have been the audio of my could have, it, honestly it just could have been the audio of my theater I think it was it I mean was, it wasn't it abundantly clear but I feel like I understood for the most part what he was saying I don't he, I don't okay. remember having issues with it he said Gotham take back your city yeah, <laughs> Immortan Joe is his name well it was just funny yeah. with the movie with Tom Hardy in it right that this enemy is very Bane like oh it was also good to see Nathan Jones in there from his yes. uh, from his wrestling days and his Troy days doing his thing. Uh, yes, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. All right. So you guys yeah, might've yeah. been the audio in my place. Oh, um, I will say the whole time watching that movie, I thought his name was Immortal Joe until I saw the IMDb. Cause yeah. I mean, it's like one letter off and I was it's, just like, I th- what are they saying? Immortal. Yeah. It's, um, you know, it's a made up word. So it's, it's difficult. You guys see the, uh, Spectre trailer. Yes. They was... released a new one on Wednesday of this yes. past week, and it was good. It's very cool. Looks like a Sam Mendes. Uh, is it Mendes or Mendes? Uh, Mendes. Mendes, yeah. Mendes. Uh, Sa- Sam exactly Mendes sure. Bond movie. It looks very cool. And it's a cool Some poster, movie. too. It's, uh, I, I like it in its simplicity, the, the first I, poster. I don't think have. it's too uh, – I don't think it's a spoiler to say that uh, James Bond goes rogue again in this movie. And somebody said, James Bond has gone rogue in the past three movies. I think we got to look at our tax dollars and how they're being spent. Because it's just just not good, James Bond. See, our tax dollars? Well, the English tax Well, like, dollars. British. I assume the person who tweeted it was British. Yeah. Yeah. yeah see where, we have to see where your pounds are going. I also saw the trailer for The Revenant uh, with uh, Leo. And that's the other... Um, that's Is that a word outside of a movie title? In your E2 uh, movie. I think... Well, I know... It means the return in French because there's a Le Revenant, which was what the return series that shut out here was based on. And Revenant. Okay. In yeah, I don't. The Revenant. Oh, whatever. Uh, but that, that trailer looks uh, pretty nuts um, to me. It's okay. the way it's shot and the way it's done. Apparently, it's done in a big moving master, much like uh, Birdman was also. So uh, that uh, looks like a very. Like a one take thing again? Yeah, the one take thing again. Uh... Which looks very ambitious. So two very cool trailers. The Spectre trailer is pretty cool. Got some nice Christoph Waltz moments in there. And then... Uh, Hello, James. Hello, How James. Are you? The author of all your pain. <laughs> Took away all the good lines. That was, I that painted all these paintings myself, not my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the my big eyes. My favorite Christoph Waltz performance is from just that trailer for Big Eyes. I want to see... Oh, my favorite Christoph Waltz performance is uh, Taron Killam. <laughs> oh god i love that impression i feel like that's such an underrated impression it's my favorite thing we might be getting it overrated at this point though alex because we're uh we've we've been too high on it 
Just us. Well, you guys can be higher on your own show, so I'll, I'll bring him back down to earth on my show when I do my hey, one Hey, Taron, kill him. You're not that talented. Next! Well, okay, yeah, he took one of his characters and you turn it against him. Wait, what? Oh, uh, thank you. That's rough stuff. Yeah. Hey, s- speaking of uh, SNL cast members, there were a lot in a movie that uh, Matt and I just saw this past week. Uh, the uh, Austin Powers, the Judd Apatow International ch- Man joint um, train wreck with uh, Amy Schumer, Bill Hader, uh, mm. uh, and LeBron James, and LeBron James is in that, and uh, John Cena is in it too. And uh, yes, yes. John Cena is also in the new Amy Poehler Tina Fey movie called Sisters. I saw him in the trailer for that. So John that Cena, was tatted up guy, right? Yeah, it's hilarious. He's like, "Who am I safe for? Just keep going." I'm like, "John's, he's John's blowing up." <laughs> John's blowing up, man. He's he retained his uh, <laughs> retained his U.S. title against Kevin Owens at Battleground, and now he's uh, he's still trucking. Uh, sorry, I don't know if that's genuine laughter for you or not, Alex. I'm really it was that. for the my safety word. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John. Uh, yeah, no, John. John's a funny, dude. Uh, yeah, Matt, what were your uh, what were your thoughts on the uh, the movie Trainwreck? You watch that by yourself? Or do you go with your uh, lovely wife? Brought the wife, brought the lovely wife. Brought the wife. Oh, you brought her. Did you just so no, you bro- Oh, you brought her. Uh, I guess I'm a little confused by that reaction. But uh, yes, I took her to a movie. <laughs> Same as bringing her. In the past tense, is brought. Uh, yeah, so we went to that movie. Uh, we uh, saw Brad Marchand as we were in line to get our uh, food. Well, actually not food, but tickets. Okay, here's a real quick. Sorry, this is well. It's a, little, it's a little unknown fact, and sorry for people who haven't listened to this podcast before. Yeah. I was in Boston. Brad Marchand was in Halifax. We are not legally allowed to be in the same city at the same time. That's yeah. right. So I can't, for legal reasons, I can't talk about it. But yeah. let's just say that Marshawn okay? fears. So we'll just leave it at that. <clears throat> Marshawn fears Vaughn. I think is the sign. <laughs> I kind of want to make a sign of that. That's a good sign. <laughs> you can make a sign. I so we're okay. gonna display it. I was at, I was gonna say Empire Beers like was it Cineplex players like which you know the same just the Scotia Bank Theater yeah, Scotia Bank Theater and they did not have a uh, a ticket booth open at the front like they did they just the box office was closed and they didn't even have all of the concession stand lines open what day of the week was on it? a Friday night <sighs> in the middle of summer which is kind of like the craziest time to do that I find that uh, stand is never open yeah it's, or, it's or so rarely odd. open I should anyway, say I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, the movie itself, uh, movie itself, I would say I enjoyed. I liked it a lot. Uh, it suffers from the same problems Judd Apatow movies does, which that it's too long. And the w- the weird part about this one is I could tell exactly where it was too long. It was too long in the beginning. It took too long to get to our friend Bill Hader. Always and does. it was pretty clear what you could cut from the beginning of that movie as far as I was concerned. But overall, I, I enjoyed it. I found it very funny. Um, I thought like it, it also suffered the flaws of some rom com movies where there's not really a clear like narrative happening. Like as soon as you just go into a scene, you're like, okay, they're having dinner. I don't know what could be going to this point or where we're coming. From. Like I just I didn't get where I was being taken or anything like that. But anyway, but it's just it's a rom com. It was funny. It was good. I didn't feel like it was like oh my gosh, Amy Schumer so brilliant, crazy. Like this is a huge coming out thing. Like she was good. And I guess I had had some experience seeing her like in her show, uh, and uh, but yeah, it wasn't like I, my mind wasn't totally blown by her cinematic presence. That's what I thought. A train wreck. Oh, uh, sorry. And Bill Hader is amazing, and LeBron James is really good. Um, Do you mean so, those things? Because it kind of sounded like no, someone well, has I a just, gun was, to your head I, right I now. To, uh, <laughs> no, 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 really <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I really do love Bill Hader. Also, also uh, Bill James. Is that the guy who did the Moneyball book? Yeah. He, okay. No, he didn't do the Moneyball book, but he, he did, did uh, yeah. Saber. Uh, uh, Saber Metrics. Saber Metrics. Yeah. And so, LeBron Hader is even better. I was thinking of Ron James, the uh, comedian who did, uh, you know, a bunch of shows in Cape Breton. I was uh, thinking of Ron Popeil, the Showtime Rotisserie Grill guy. Just you said, said it. it. And forget it. <laughs> we could. Will. K Sun from. The middle, uh, yeah, man, I I, I agree. It, it had the Judd Apatow thing of the get on with it uh, syndrome. Uh, two hours and five minutes is a long time. What? A, but um, to that end, what I do enjoy about the Judd Apatow 
uh, universe and, and kind of the, the, the worlds he creates in the movies. I, I, I like hanging out with them. And I like hanging out with people. I'm just like, I just hang out with these people all day. These are more interesting than my real friends. Just kidding, real friends who don't listen to the show. You guys are more interesting. But I like hanging out with them. Um, and, uh, yeah, Jed, he's, he's so in love with, uh, with all his material. Uh, I like uh, Colin Quinn, who's 56, plays her dad. <laughs> in, I was thinking in that was odd casting. I, well, I like him. I like him as the character. I was like, Yeah, right. sure, but I, that's still... Uh, yeah, he's just, he's, yeah, he's pretty young to be playing a, a guy in a home, but, uh, no, so. Oh, he's in a home. I was going to say, like, what, what's the, the yeah, he's in a, he's in a home, he's in a home in a wheelchair. Okay. Um, yeah. Gotcha. So he's supposed to be, I, I suppose older than he is, but eh, it works. The, the cast is, is great. Todd, the bottom, like even like the little roles, like you have David Tell playing a, um, a bum on the street. He's got some funny stuff. Uh, a lot of athletes in this one. Amari Stoudemire has got a, a pretty, uh, decent role lebron's pretty funny john cena's got i think one of the funniest parts in the whole in the whole thing and, and he does quite well he holds his own um and uh yes you're right bill Hader is uh is remarkable i'm trying to think of who else oh yeah there's one scene with a couple other uh, celebrity cameos that kind of fell a little flat for me um yeah. that i want that i want to uh, spoil for you but i'm sure we're yeah. thinking of those i'm sure we're thinking of the same one um i was like okay this is a little this is a little uh, gimmicky but um I hate yeah, when cameos I, fall flat. You're just like, oh, you probably had high hopes for this, didn't you? Well, well, I'm, I don't know if they had really high hopes. So these kind of, it, it, it was a bit of a cameo parade in this in this movie. It's like, okay, you know, LeBron's in it, and and then um, we got a bunch of other people. So it, it kind of uh, the, the gimmick kind of re- wears stale after a little while. The impression um, I get though is that LeBron's kind of bordering on cameo more into just being a character in the movie. Yeah, being a oh, character yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't as familiar with Amy Schumer as a lot of people were. So I went home and I watched uh, a bunch of her uh, sketches. I, I quite enjoyed her. And if you're familiar with your sketch work, then this this movie's kind of like the the film version of that. I wouldn't say it's like Monty Python's and now for something completely different, where it's like they just reshoot all their sketches, but in a, in a film. But it's 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 something similar to that. But this is her. This is her big cinematic coming out party, and, and the word is that she's uh, now highly sought after by people casting movies. But I'm a little concerned that uh, what she'll do with somebody else's material because she wrote this. Uh, so I, I'm wondering if it'll be the case. I mean, Jason Siegel can write for himself, but he can also do other people's um, work quite well, as we saw in How I Met Your Mother for you know there's seven seasons, uh, and he also does Avatar quite well. So I'm wondering where Amy Schumer goes from here, whether she can just uh, only do projects that she writes herself or she can do some some other people's work, some other people's writing. Uh, and I'm, you know, I hope she can. I, I find her quite entertaining. So I think most people's enjoyment of this movie is going to hinge on the fact uh, whether you like her or not. Yeah, you know, it did well at the box office, though. Yeah, it did well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like it did 30 off of behind Ant-Man and Minion, so it wasn't going to finish number one. But, I mean, for what it was. I, I assume it's an R-rated comedy or, you know. Oh, very much so, yeah. In the States? Commercially yeah. so. The, yeah, in yeah. the States. Up here, it's 14A. We're a little more liberal, you know. We let our F-bombs fly. Uh, a lot more in Canada for some reason. I was going to check out Ant-Man last week, but I didn't get a chance to. So Ant- yeah, Ant- Ant-Man review will be coming. Who, uh, yeah, Ant-Man review will be coming. um you know, in the coming weeks. I like you care. Who cares what I think? But, uh, yeah. Tra- I, I care. Uh, I want to hear. Oh, okay. Good. All right. At least somebody yeah. cares. At least somebody out there cares. But, uh, yeah. Trainwreck. Um, if you're an Apatowite, which isn't a word, then you'll, uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Okay. So what's out of 10? Let's get two out of, let's get your out of 10, Matt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You always get me for out of 10s. I'm not ready for it. Uh, <laughs> That's my thing, half? man. I'm sure. always like, hey, Matt, how would you rate that fork? Out of 10. Go. Did it bring the food to your mouth like you wanted it to? Seven and a half out of ten. Will. Sure. I give it eight and a half. Eight and a half. Foo Fighters get 60,000 out of ten. Yeah. Well, that's pretty, pretty high. Good. That's, that's really I mean, high. That's kind of low, actually, because they didn't sing uh, In Your Honor or Big Me. But whatever. <laughs> they didn't sing it, you know, these few songs out of the million tracks that they that they have. Um, yeah, I went to the Metallica show, and one of my friends was like, oh, they play this. And I'm like, oh, they're not, they're not going to play that song. And they didn't. And he was like, oh, they play that song. I was like, no, they're not going to play that. I hope they play that song with the cowbell. No, hope, not happening. Hope they, say, hope they do St. Anger. Uh, oh, they do St. Anger, yeah. I don't even think they play that in their 30th anniversary show. 
I like Saint Anger. And they played uh, the whole thing. It's, look, it's a great gym track. I will say that. Actually, I, yeah, I even think the first f- four songs on that album are pretty good gym tracks. The rest are, are all it's all too much. Even Lars is, is it dead. Jericho is like, like a staunch defendant of that album, or maybe he's not. Uh, Jimmy Page is. Jimmy Page actually okay. likes Saint Anger. He's like, yeah, I, th- I liked it, and I think Jack White did too. I can't remember. I, th- I know it was Robert Trujillo was out somewhere, and they were like, "Ooh, we like that album." So do they do? I disappear in concert. <laughs> Uh, no, and the, the sound for the, the <sighs> Mission so Impossible Two soundtrack. No, they didn't, yeah. they didn't get around to doing that one. <laughs> oh, the new um, well, the new Mission Impossible opens this Friday, right? Yeah. Uh, if this nope. Friday is July thirty first. Then yes, then yeah. yes. Uh, it is. Um, this is where Ethan Hunt is. It's called Rouge Nation. It's where Ethan Hunt breaks into the um, Mac Cosmetics Rouge. Uh, headquarters. Right, that's the one. I think I might get that confused with something else. Uh, and that's my bad. Uh, oh, hey, guys. The Undertaker came back at uh, Battleground the other night. What do you guys think? That's pretty nuts. I didn't see it coming. I was glad I didn't see results before I saw the show. That's that was a uh, thing, hey? That yeah, was the thing. That came out. Yeah, it was a thing. It was, uh, it, it honestly, it was one of the more surprising things I've seen in wrestling in a long time. And I don't know if it's going to be good or not, but I will say he looks pretty spry from what I saw from him on uh, Monday Night Raw the night after. He, he took a sip of the Fountain of Youth or something. He, he took a trip with Ponce and he found it, and uh, and now he's he's looking a lot more spry than he did a couple of years ago. Because the Let's first just say he won't be tested as part of the wellness policy anytime soon. Maybe. <laughs> he's uh, hey, he's undead. He has no blood, so you know he's he's a special case. Can't do a blood test on a guy with no blood. Well, I think it's the first SummerSlam he's been to in like five, and I think five years. Who has the belt right now? Who's the world Seth, Seth, Seth Rollins. Still? Okay. Yeah, yeah, Seth. Is well, still he was the main event, and then Taker interfered, and they're just like, yeah, whatever. And I'm wondering, oh, Cena. man. Yeah, I'm wonder. I'm wondering if he'll have a program with Cena, who's still the U.S. champion. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, that, that's the one, that's the one thing that's got to be worried about right now is the world title picture. I was kind of hoping Dan would come back on raw, but it, obviously he's not healthy enough yet. And he should definitely not be rushed into the main event spot. I'm sorry, again. Is Dan Daniel Bryant? <laughs> so, Daniel Dan. Bryant. What about, yes, what about Dan Chris? Bryant. You can't just call him Dan. Uh, you knew who he was. I was, I, I got it. Thinking, I was like, I scrambled. Dan, Danica Patrick. Uh, no, Dan. Uh, oh, uh, what was the deal that Bill Simmons uh, signed? By the way, he's with HBO now. He's with yeah. HBO, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's back in a TV. multi-platform deal. Oh, what I like that. Uh, I mean, he wasn't going to be like you know, he was never going to be a free agent. He could have either done his own thing or someone was going to sign him, and that's pretty much as good as you're going to get with it. You're saying he wasn't going to be off the shelf for too long, so to speak. Oh God, no. Yeah, Bill Simmons doing his thing. Jeez, he's and- he's, he's, he's a money maker. And how far are we? Are we a month out from uh, preseason? And think about this. Think about this story to interrupt. But think about how his That's issue right. with ESPN came from the the Roger Goodell thing. But now he has kind of this John Oliver esque ability to just say whatever he wants about whoever he wants. He doesn't have to worry about sponsors or deals with like unless he goes off on Game of Thrones or, or <laughs> uh, last week tonight. But he's a sports guy, and now he can say whatever the heck he wants. Well, even John Oliver makes fun of the Honorage movie on last week tonight. And he's you know it's an HBO movie. <laughs> Exactly. HBO, I think HBO is kind of cool with all their properties. They're like, no, we're, we're no, we're, we know we're good. You can say what you want. It's not really well, going to affect things. Plus, I think you get into certain things. Like, if you sign Bill Simmons, you know what you're getting from that. If you sign John Oliver and say, say whatever you want, you know what you're getting from that. But if you're someone else, you're just like, hey, can you not talk about me or me? You're just like, well, no, that's not really who I am. You give give somebody the uh, you know the WWE announcers list of what you can and can't say exactly. on television. Yeah. That's what you, that's when you're. I guessing ESPN is also a publicly traded company. I know they're owned by they're owned, well, they're by, owned Disney, by Disney, right? so they're a publicly traded company. That yes, yeah, so so all that stuff has to be very um, I'll say sterile and very uh, you know got to make sure you say the right thing. Or else I mean they're gonna, not they're not hurting because they have these NFL deals and stuff like that, but they're they're almost getting rid of guys like that. You're cutting off your nose to spite your face. I like that expression, um, by the way. I like that I think a lot. They get rid of. Uh, I think get rid of Olbermann, which I'm definitely okay with. Uh, he was really annoying to listen to. Because um, so he positive uh, about that. I don't know when Olbermann came on ESPN, but wasn't he like a CNN guy for a while? Like, didn't he actually do like actual news stuff, and then he just does oh, sports? He, I think he was an MSNBC guy. He did sports, I mean, I mean, then he did MSNBC, and he, then he yeah, he did Sports Center, then he went to MSNBC, then he went back to sports. In stunk so. Uh, Let's see here. 
All right, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, of this. people with ESPN who didn't like, like Colin Coward was not a fan of them getting rid of Bill Simmons or anything like that, but whatever. Um, yeah, I think he left. Anyway, sorry. I think he, I think he left um, MSM, or sorry, um, ESPN, but I'm not positive on that. Oh, it doesn't matter. Sorry. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. As a matter Return of this show, departure from ESPN, yeah. On July July 15th, sorry, in July 2015, ESPN announced that Olbermann would be leaving the network later that month. It's just ESPN said the departure was a result of a business decision to move in another direction. So I think they're just going to be – I don't think they're going to have any – because he was like your opinion piece guy really sort of besides Simmons. So I feel like they're just not going to have anything on that. Yeah, he's, he's like the guy who's like, all right, in one minute with you know this guy. It's like, you know, in baseball, it used to be a nickel for a popcorn and nowadays blah, blah, blah. You know, he'd be that guy. Give him that opinion piece. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, this show is not uh, – we're not part of a – we're not owned by Disney, uh, fortunately or unfortunately. Sweet. I would sell out so hard in a second. Oh, yeah, we will. Once once we get picked up by Disney as part of the Disney Podcast Network, uh, then we're definitely selling out and we'll say whatever we want. Hey, we already gushed over Inside Out and, and we'll probably gush over Star Wars. So, heck, we'd be practically represent them already. Goodness. I will um, not promise you a gushing over Star Wars, ladies and gentlemen. I'll give you my full-on, hardcore opinion, good, bad, and different. Uh, good. I mean, bad. I mean, I mean I'm different. indifferent. <laughs> uh, but this, this is the show. We can say whatever the heck we want. Oh, boy, not can we, though? About. Whatever the fooey. Whatever the, <laughs> whatever the we want. F- whatever speaking the speaking of which, Boston, want. the first city to yell foo at the Foo Fighters. Were they? Did he say that? He's like, you guys are the first people. Yeah, hot ass. Yeah, he found it. Well, he found it a little disconcerting. <laughs> oh, he thinks he's being booed. He's well, like, it just sounds like you're being booed. Like, I never liked that with, like, Bruce Springsteen or Isaac Bruce or anything like that. Like, I'm always like, that sounds weird. It just yeah. sounds like you're booing him. Luongo, yeah. But it's like, they're not, you know, it's Yeah, ironic, exactly. Luongo, too. You're just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but whatever. It's not ironic, even. I was I was yelling, foo earns. I made that very, very clear. Uh, I was, was going to say, we're, we're about. Um, I was going to say earlier, we're about a month. Are we a month out from preseason or even closer to that NFL preseason? Uh, we would be closer to that now. A couple weeks? Yeah, it's going to start like mid-August. What was Peterson just signed a big deal, right? Minnesota? Uh, no idea. I think, okay. I was, I thought you Sorry. Were... <laughs> Can we talk about this before the show, Will, instead of leaving me out to hang like that? Shouldn't it have – did he sign a big contract, Matt? I'm pretty uh, sure <laughs> they agreed well, to restructure. He already has one, but no. Oh, okay, never mind. I guess it was way off base. Um, but hey, and uh, NFL football preseason starting up off. soon. That'll be a good time. He gets guaranteed money though, apparently. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see how he does. Um, Adrian or sorry, Ray Rice still a man without a uh, without a band. I don't think that's going to change anytime oh, he's, soon. He's, he's a man without a career. Yeah, he's still playing. Your I don't know where he'll, where he'll play. He's in Europe. Nowhere. There's nowhere to play. Yeah, where's he gonna play in Europe? There's uh, say Europe again. There's uh, there's Europe. Oh, there's no more and no, there's no more NFL Europe. In That's Paris, sure. in Prague, yeah, in Paris. Yeah, that's a guy I work. I he's uh, I, I work with the guy who's the uh, quarterback of the UBC Thunderbirds, and he plays out in Sweden. <laughs> I guess there's uh, there's teams out there. It'll be part of the okay. Olympics when they add it to the Olympics. When one country. He's only good at it, and nobody else is. That makes no sense to me, by the way. What, playing in the Olympics or playing in Europe? Playing in the Olympics. Olympics. Yeah, they're not, no, they're not going to add football to the Olympics. It's only, it's, they only play it in one country. Well. Unless you have, like, the Australian rules football guys play against the uh That'd be awesome, add American Australian rules football, football. To, to that. Yeah, that'd be sweet. That'd what be awesome. CFL rules, though? That kind of evens the, the thing again, right? Evens the I, playing field. That's true. Oh, no pun intended, right? Because they play on a field? Nope. Uh, yeah, no pun intended at all. No, I took it as a pun. That's correct. I, I that did was not your intend in- a pun. That's your intention. Pun. Do not take it as a pun. Uh, all right. Think well, of what I intended, not what I've done. I, uh, I, well, I'm trying not to think of what you've done. It's oh, just, how dare you? It's just, it's just too awful. Hey, uh, I'm on Twitter, oh, guys. Boy. You guys on Twitter, Good too? Good for you, man. Uh, I'm not. I am on Twitter. You're not? Sorry. Okay. You, you dropped off. Uh, I'm on Josh Twitter. I'm uh, at William C. Vaughn. Um, if you guys want to give your Twitter uh, addresses, uh, now it's time to do so. Sure. I'm at, I'm a- uh, I'm at William C. Vaughn. Uh, and if you guys want to give your Twitter addresses, now would be the time. 
I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to ditch that middle initial. What can you change your Twitter handle once you have it, or you have to? Yes, you absolutely can. Okay, Matt works for Twitter. Thank you very much, Matt. I just like Twitter and I know this stuff, man. Sorry. No, it's good. It's good. I just like Twitter and I know this stuff. Can you give them <laughs> some sort of inside information? How? Yes, how this give is it. Done? Give me the inside curve. Yeah, you can definitely do it. Just Google change Twitter handle and you'll find it. Okay, good. cool, man. That's how kids find out stuff these days. So I found out literally everything. Oh, uh, Alex, you're on a refurb, right? A refurb Mac? I think it's uh, a refurb Mac. Yeah, that's right? a refurb Mac. I think no. I am. I think I am. She's working well for you. I'm, I'm looking at refurbs myself. I'm spending okay. some time with the Apple I've store. never had any. Click I've heard good things about it. My wife has one. She's okay. happy as a, a, a happy person. I don't know how that expression works. Wow. Okay. You can say <laughs> pig and dookie. And <laughs> well, I don't like comparing my wife to either of those things. No, it's good. Yeah, that's fair enough. Like a, like flies to the dookie. i got to stop saying that <laughs> word. Hey, thanks for uh, listening this week. Um, I don't You're know welcome. If they got their... Uh, Shut up. Okay. I don't know if everybody got their Twitter handles out, but uh, we're, on the, uh, we're on the internet. And uh, tell your friends about this show. I don't know why you would, but uh, we appreciate everybody who listens and downloads this. And the more listeners and subscribers we have, the closer we'll get to getting on the Disney Podcast Network. Which I, I don't even think exists, but mm-hmm. I know ESPN has mm-hmm. podcasts. So there you go. I'm about to listen to PTI right now, actually, with Mike and um, that other guy. I think I'm going to call my show PTI. <laughs> Tony. Uh, all right. Thanks a lot, guys. And uh, we'll see you next week. We won't see them. I yeah, know. You, you'll see They'll us. They'll hear us. I never see our listeners. Frankly, I'm not I see them sure all the time. Because oh, none of your okay. friends listen to the show. I don't, well, I mean, having friends is kind of the downfall of, of that, but whatever. Yeah, that's true. Yep. It's been. Nope. It has been. It's been. It was. It yeah, was. was. Okay, let's. We need an outro and an intro song. We'll get to this later, but uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we we'll, we'll, we'll figure it Put out. It. Yeah. Put it on the put it on the two. Brano, brano. No, not that song. <laughs> put it on the two. <laughs> put it on the two to, to do list. <laughs> uh, not, or as not, Lil call it, the to do list. Oh, I did it all for the nookie. I don't know why I said no, that. No, that's the nookie. <laughs> Wait, isn't the Tanuki suit the one Mario wears where he turns into a, a statue? It's a Tanuki suit. Oh, oh Tanuki. it's a Tanuki okay. suit. No, yeah. you're Mario. Oh, why'd you say it like that? He... Stop it. You ought to know. <laughs> What's he saying? Oh, my goodness. All right. I can't Let's get out of this thing. bad lip reading thing. <laughs> Stop yeah. doing heroin. That's what he says. <laughs> 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 All right. So sorry, everybody. But if All you're right. doing heroin, stop it. Stop. Stop doing it. Yeah. Uh, I have a great heroin story I should tell you guys sometime. Oh, what? On the air. Return of best stories. Whoa. What? Best? What?